Oh, yeah. Good morning. Yes, DJ, hello. It is Wednesday. Feels like Monday because, well, you know, I hadn't worked. So, Wednesday at 7 is when I set my alarm for. I don't have time to take a shower. All that kind of stuff. So I don't have to work till 9.25. So, sit. Stay. 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 Sit. So, good morning. Happy Wednesday. Eat. Eat. It definitely takes her a lot longer. Thanks, Mom. Thanks for buying her that doodad. Try this again. Can I use your tongue? Yeah, use your tongue. <laughs> Can't get in here, in there with her teeth. It's like, she just, uh, whatever. Whatever. She's not eating like a pig, so that's good. It'd be good for her gas. Herbster. Good morning, Herbinator. Got your kale. There you go, Herbster. Mom understood when I told her the instructions on feeding the Herbster is to, um, it's not a measurement, just give him a loose handful. And he knows, and she understood. My mom's so smart. Yeah, she gets, she gets me. She gets me. Good morning, Herbin Eater. I see you there. Yeah. Oh, I'm so thirsty. You know what? I'm gonna have a glass of milk. A glass of milk. Hey, someone ate a muffin. Must have been Russ. Russ must have ate a muffin. That's all right, because I bought muffins last week. Okay. I will have a glass of milk because I am thirsty. Look at this island. Look at this kitchen. This kitchen needs to be clean. Look at the kitchen. Ugh. Someday, this whole kitchen will be cleaned up. Alright, well, um... I spent like three minutes of me jabber jabbering about nothing. I will talk to you later. Bye. Good uh, uh, good morning. It's eleven forty-five or something like that. I don't know. Um. Okay, I just want to recap our whole weekend, starting with the super fun time of Ultra Music Festival Day 1. If you follow Ultra on Insta uh, Instagram, on Twitter, you will be fully aware of the hashtag Fire Festival 2. So here's a little backstory. Fire Festival was a festival that was supposed to be huge on, a pri on an island and it was, Ja Rule was planning it all together, putting it all together. So come the day of Fire Festival, pe thousands of people show up and they cancel it the day of. So there are no, there are no vendors, there's no food, there's no water, there's nothing. People are stranded on the Fire Festival Island. No food, no water, no transportation. So they are comparing Fire Festival 
to, or they're comparing Ultra Day 1 to Fire Festival. Which I don't think is really fair because the festival happened. It didn't get canceled or anything. However, the only, um, what was, um, compared to that is the lack of food, water, and transportation after the festival. So, day one. There's a shuttle provided, um, from wherever your pickup point is to the uh, Virginia Key Island where the festival is being held. This is my personal experience. This is not anybody else's. Mine and Russ's personal experience. So we get there early. We The buses are supposed to pick us up at noon is what, the, is what they said. Noon Friday and 1 o'clock all the other days because they were supposed to let us in to the festival an hour early so we had time to walk around, get a feel of the grounds, so on and so forth. So, the buses were half an hour late picking us up. So we're out, we have thousands of people, well, I don't know how many people actually in the daytime, but we had a lot of people, hundreds possibly, waiting outside uh, in the heat at noon, waiting for our bus to come and pick us up, take us to Virginia Key. So, why don't we have any food around here? Again, half an hour late. I'll do that for lunch. Um, we get there, the line to the festival, they were supposed to drop us off at the main gate. They did not. They dropped us off at the, uh, there's two parts to the, to the, um, uh, festival. There's the main area. I don't know what they called that one. Then there was resistance, um, which was like a walk. <laughs> it was a walk. So I'm pretty sure it was at least a mile from resistance stage to main stage. So, we're dropped off at the wrong entrance. They dropped us off at resistance instead of main stage. Um, so we walk, all thousands of us from the bus that get dropped off at the wrong location, we walk to main entrance and then there is that line there, which ended up being looped from, we were not very beginning, but we were part of the first, maybe first few hundred people, I'd say probably 500 people. Um, we were first in that area. So from the resistance area, not resistance, from the main part where Russ and I were staying, standing, it went back to that mile or whatever from resistance and then it looped back around on the other side of the gate to where Russ and I were standing. So people were literally walking at least two, maybe even three miles to get to the entrance because the buses dropped them off at the wrong place. Yay, day one start. So, we finally get to where the cages, the cages, the lines are, and they're not clearly marked. Apparently there's multiple lines. We're all in one line and people are not telling us to go to the other lines. There's multiple lines. So we finally get to where the line, the barricades start for the lines. And then they're finally telling us there's other lines. I don't know why you're standing there. Well, nobody told us, but thanks. So finally, line gets moving. The checkpoints are great. They have a different checkpoint to check your, I, your, uh, this, the wristband has, there's a chip in it. So they have their little chip readers, whatever. Scan that. Next checkpoint is ID check. So they check your ID, make, so you have to be uh, 18 and older. So check the ID, done. Next check is bag check or whatever. So, checked, done, we're in. 
that was very smooth. The festival goings, uh, as far as like what was playing, who was playing, all that was on time. It was fantastic. The whole day was awesome. Plenty of food, plenty of water, plenty of everything to look at and to do and to listen to and party it up. It was great. So, end of day. <clears throat> Ultra ran from 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. So the festival grounds closed at 2 a.m. Everybody had to leave. So we have over 10,000 people leaving the festival grounds. Here's what the problem was. They did, they, the staff, didn't know where buses were supposed to pick people up at. The buses didn't know where they were supposed to pick people up at. Also, there weren't enough buses. So, we have literally over 10,000 people out on Virginia Key in traffic. There's, there's, it's one way on one side and then you loop around, comes back. It's just a long island. So, um, so you got the island, you know, if you're going to the island and then back, so on so forth. So on this side, there's this side, which has the, which saw the festival grounds. Hold on. Okay. So, um, Ross and I leave the grounds where we think we're supposed to be. There are no signs to which bus is picking up and dropping off where. There's no signs. Staff doesn't know. We. This is what happened to Russ and I. We leave the gate. We say, which bus goes to American Airlines Stadium? That's where we parked. Staff says, I've been told it was down at the resistance side. So we walk that mile down to resistance. Uh, okay, so we're here. Let's just say this is the map. All right, and here's resistance, here's us. We walk that mile down to resistance. Another staff member says that the buses are actually picking us up at the main entrance. So we walk back to the main entrance. Another staff member says resistance side. So we walk halfway because we're asking actually people, not staff members, where are we supposed to go? Do you know what bus? Are you going to American Airlines? We're asking people, uh, festival goers, do you know where you're going? Nobody knows where they're going. Nobody has any clue. Any clue. So we're, we're just standing, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're listening, we're watching. Buses are coming and going, not full. Not full, and some of them are just empty. And some of them, I don't even know. They just drove by and said, screw it. We're not picking anybody up. They didn't have enough buses. They didn't have any coordination as to where people were supposed to go to get dropped off at their, um, you know, where they parked their car. So we're out there. 2 a.m. We leave. I think we even left a little early because the last... Uh, person we didn't really care to see. So, anyway, 2 a.m. We did not get on a bus until 4. 4 a.m. No, 4.30. 4.30 a.m. So we were standing and walking for two and a half hours wondering what the hell are we supposed to do, you know? So we're there, two and a half hours. Finally, we're on a bus. We have no clue if this bus is taking us to the right place. Thankfully, it does. We're in our car by uh, probably about five o'clock. We drive back to our location or where we're staying it's about 5 30. we did not get in bed and asleep till around 6 a.m that's four hours two three four five six that's four hours 
from festival clothes to when we shut our eyes and go to bed. That was the debacle. Now, I'll tell you about day two on my lunch break. Okay, day two. Ross and I wake up probably about 11-ish time. And uh, we were planning on getting to the bus, the shuttles, um, around the same time. But we needed the sleep. So, shuttle buses day two come pretty regularly. We apparently have enough of them, so um, that's good. We get to the fairgrounds, or the fair, not fair, concert grounds, I guess. We get there at a decent time. They drop us off at the right spot, which is main gate entrance. They drop us off at the right place. The lines to get in still running very smooth. Checkpoints on point. It was great. We get in. We enjoy ourselves to the whole day. On the way to, uh, on the way to, we were talking to a bunch of people about their experiences. So, on the way there, we're talking to the people on the bus about what they experienced the night before because a lot of them um, walked they ended up walking from the grounds uh, across the bridge that connects the island to Florida they ended up walking back which by the way is probably a three mile hike just to get to the mainland and then wherever they parked at is probably another three miles. So they're walking six plus miles just to get to their car. So we talked to a couple. Um, they were talking about, they ended up walking back to the, to the mainland and um, they caught an Uber. So Ultra Music Festival Miami is the only three-day ultra festival. There are other ultra music festivals around the world, um, but those are only one day. So this ultra music festival, people from all over the world show up. We had Japan, we had Switzerland, we had Australia, New Zealand, Africa, everywhere, literally everywhere that you know, has planes, you can make it to um, Ultra Music Festival Miami. So, um, a couple we were talking to, they were from the States, so it wasn't like a language barrier. But anyways, language barrier, speaking of, this couple said that the Uber drivers are not allowed on Virginia Key Island. So, um, once you get on back to the Florida mainland, you can catch an Uber there and to your shuttle or wherever you were supposed to be picked up at or dropped off. Anyway, um, the people that we talked to said that there was a group of Japanese girls and there was a language barrier. So they helped him get a cab because the cab, or not a cab, an Uber, because the Uber driver that was going to pick them up was giving them an outrageous price. Like some people would pay an Uber driver to take them back to their hotel or wherever, car, anywhere. Um, they paid them upwards of 150 bucks for a ride that would normally be probably $20. And uh, so Uber people were taking advantage of not just the locals, but the people, especially the people out that come from out of the country because they didn't understand. So the couple we talked to, um, talked to the Uber driver and they got them a good Uber driver that, um, wouldn't charge them. You know, they talked them down basically and talked to them and said, and what they would charge them for their rides. So, after day two event was over, the, um, the, uh, what do you call it, the guy, DJ, I guess, 
excuse me one second. So um, he got, so the announcer guys like, oh, Jesus, you know, the guy, not the DJ, but the guy who in between sets would be like, where's Switzerland? Where's uh, Japan? Where's wherever? You know, that guy. So he was telling us about where our shuttles are. So they got it figured out. All right. So, um, they were color coded. They're actually directions this time. Whereas last time, nobody knew anything. On Friday night, nobody knew anything. So Saturday, day two. Um, okay. So this is the line for this shuttle, this line for that shuttle. Here's the colors. Get in that line. So we get in that line, which our line for some reason had two shuttles instead of one. Like there was the one, their line was much shorter than ours. Ours was still had to walk probably half a mile to get to the shuttle. Like it was a line, like half a mile long at least. Um, we got to the shuttle, to the actual bus, I mean. Um, so, just a second. Alright, um, yeah, so, we get on our shuttle, in the line that we're supposed to be in, it drops us off at the wrong location. So, day two, buses are figured out, except they still dropped us off at the wrong location. We weren't the only bus that dropped off the wrong location. There were other buses too, and they were dropped off at the wrong location. So we'd walked probably another, I'm gonna say probably three to five blocks. Yeah, maybe three blocks. This is wet. It's got the water. So about three blocks, no it wasn't, I'm going to say three to five blocks, I don't know how long it was, I was so tired, it was, by the time we got back to our car, it was four in the morning, by the time we got back to our, our living quarters, it was five, about five in the morning, so it was earlier, and that's good, it was earlier, they got it pretty much figured out. But we still got shut up, shuttled to the wrong place. So next break, I'll tell you about day three. All right, so day three, everything running smoothly, finally. Um, <clears throat> buses there, no problem, just like day two, zero problems, no big deal. Um, the walk up through the line dropped off at the right place. We went through, uh, the checks, no problems. Day three was the best day. As far as transportation goes, it was best day and, uh, zero problems. So uh, after the festivities, um, the bus was on, not on time, it was there. We got on, they went to the right place. Everything went very smooth. So, I mean, the line even seemed like it was like uh, not as long, the wait, when we were waiting. So that was good. Day three, there's not really much to report as far as mishaps, no mishaps were happening um yeah it was smooth we listened to more stories from other people who just had the first day the day one just what their experiences were and it is crazy how some people some people even they sold their wristbands these wristbands not cheap so i mean if you have the luxury to do so by all means, I guess. Some people, day one, after day one, they sold their wristbands and they didn't come back. So day two and three seemed like there wasn't that many people there, especially in the beginning. The beginning of the day, 
people, not a whole lot of people were there, I think, because it goes till 2 in the morning. And unless you are, like, used to, like, maybe working third shift or something, you're going to be really tired. Um, especially if just working, not working, just uh, dancing and the heat from the sun, all that stuff is just very... Uh, a lot if you're not used to it so but it was so much fun the third day was epic I mean they were all epic but the third day was probably my favorite um, I fell down the stairs on the way out of the event but I mean I lived I didn't break any bones with my nose I have a flaky nose because of sunburn I guess that's what my nose is flaking. I'm going to do a mask later on. So that was my experience. That was Russ and I, Russ and mine. That was our experience. Day one, two, and three of Ultra. I would not have sold our wristbands. I don't care how bad the transportation was, even if it was terrible on all three days. I wouldn't go again, but... I would definitely wouldn't be selling the wristbands. Yeah. It was it was awesome. If you get a chance to go, go. I think that the transportation sucked so bad this year because this was a new venue. They didn't really know uh all of it the what was going on and stuff. My lips are chap not chapped, they're burnt too. Apparently I didn't have enough chapstick on. My nose is peeling. My face feels like leathery. Whatever. Anyway, so yeah, it was a great time. That was the only stuff. Comparing it to Fire Festival, the only the only comparison was um, day one with no transportation, no food, and no water. But they fixed it. They fixed it. So. All is well. Um, I've got nothing to add as far as the Ultra, Ultra goes. Ross is in the bathroom doing stuff. I don't know what. Um, yeah, so that's it for, for right now. I will talk to you later. Enjoy my last break. Just chilling. And um, yeah, that's it. Talk to you later. Bye. Right, JJ, you want to eat? Yes? Are you sure? You want to eat? You want to eat? JJ, you want to eat? You want to eat? Yes? You want to eat? Jump, 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 jump. You want to eat? You want to eat? <coughs> oh, oh, she wants to eat. Sit. Stay. Take her a couple of minutes to eat, which is great. Thanks, Mom, for the new food dish for JJ. It's very helpful for her. Yes. <laughs> yes, she can't get her no whole face in there, so she doesn't like to not eat so fast. That's good. Do we have any chicken? We do. We don't have any cheese. Ooh, oh, I know. We got waffle fries. I'm gonna make waffle fries. And that's what I'm gonna eat for supper because we don't have any cheese and I wanna make a chicken and cheese quesadilla. You can't make a quesadilla without cheese. You need queso cheese or, you know, just cheese, really. How? What is that? I got bit. Something bit me! Just kidding. Nothing bit me. I just had a sting on my shoulder. Not shoulder. Arm. Whatever. Okay. We're making waffle fries. 
You know, all fries are the same. Like, they're all potato, right? Well, most fries. Most fries are just potato, but depending on how they're cut, they just taste differently for some reason. Okay, 425, 425. Gonna bake the fries. I don't want to bake the fries. I'm going to put them in my in my fryer. That's what I'm going to do. Put the fries in the fryer. I'm going to make chips, as the English call them. Chips. Why do you call them chips? Why do we call chips? Why don't we call chips fries? Huh? Crisps are chips, right? In the overseas? In the overseas. Like in England or wherever. Our neighbors across the pond. How do I put this in here? Babe! Yeah, I'm gonna make waffle fries. If they're called chips. Fries are chips and chips are crisps. But fries are not fries. What are fries? Oh, I have to clean this. You know, this um, air fryer seems to have an average time of 20 minutes. Chips, 20 minutes from frozen or, yeah, from frozen. Fish, 20 minutes from unfrozen. Thawed, I guess, unfrozen. I will get some water. So what we did um, to bring, we went to their local Walmart at the, when we were in Miami, and one of the nearby Walmarts. Anyway, we went to Walmart and we picked up stuff that we would need for breakfast for uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, not Thursday. Not Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, so we wouldn't have to like get up for breakfast or be super hungry or whatever. So we did that. We just got breakfast foods or I got like hot pockets for, because I'll eat one hot pocket and be good for a few hours or whatever. Um, Russ got a couple few uh, breakfast bowls, um, some of the, the previous uh, renters had, they left like uh, soup, so we ate their soup, it was left over, and so, like you know, the microwave soup stuff, that kind of stuff, cup of soup, that stuff, so we ate that, it was to save money, it's good to um, see if you can buy food at the grocery store, and then just have it at your place, you know, so that um, you're saving money that way. Um, if you've never been to a, an electronic dance music festival or EDM festival, something like Ultra or Electric Daisy Carnival, um, there's all kinds. You could probably find one near you. Anyway, uh, if you've never been to one, you'll find many, many different types of people. Ultra is, they promote, um, positivity and differences. Like whether you're big or or like tall or or short or big or small whatever race or creed or gender and anything that you identify as they're all for the positivity of it and acceptance in no matter who you are Russ and I talk to so many different people they um unlike I've been to lots of rock concerts um and the, they have the, you know, the mosh pit at the rock concert. People are aggressive. People are, uh, they push and they shove and they don't care who you are. If they want the front, 
they're going to get there no matter what. They also do the whole mosh pit thing where they're like running into people and stuff. Uh, yeah. EDM crowds are very different from rock concert crowds. Um, as far as uh, people, uh, not people, as far as like the pit area or the concert, the audience part, they are very accommodating or they're very, they're not like mellow. They don't just like sit there and stuff. They are definitely dancing around, but if they hit you, by accident they apologize you know and then they make room or they'll jump just enough to make to make sure nobody feels too overcrowded or too um smashed in like smashed together and stuff like that they'll get we get close especially if you're really close to stage but i always had mo i always had room to stretch if i needed to um some people would sit down in the middle of a crowd and nobody cared they weren't like that's so stupid or whatever they weren't pushy um people were polite in they i had a guy i think he was from switzerland or something he asked if he could have his put his flag out because i was uh by the bar there was like a, a row it was like the front and then there was like a middle aisle I was in the middle aisle like next to the bar barricade thing there and so he asked it he asked me if he could put it there I'm like yeah so he put his flag there and he stood there obviously but he wasn't he knew he was cognizant of when I was like recording he wouldn't like wave his flag in front of my camera uh, my phone or whatever so then I could still record without being um, interrupted and and he wasn't rude nobody was rude everybody was nice every time I went to a, a rock concert nobody would talk to anybody else if you try to join in in a conversation with them they would kind of be like yeah whatever and not include you in their conversation people at this at this EDM concert this EDM uh, at ultra they would come to you even they would be like hey how's it going or i was sitting at a bench you know and i looked alone i was sitting alone for a little while because russ was dancing and i needed to rest or relax or whatever um yeah they would they would just talk they would just be so friendly and it was it's awesome really i mean their their crowds are fantastic there's people all kinds of people every single kind of person you could possibly think of was there except like maybe the hardcore devil rock people you know like ugh, those people probably weren't there but everybody else was there i uh i loved the crowd the energy is fantastic it would feel felt welcoming it felt just great and now my phone is like at five percent so I'm gonna go plug it in and watch some TV I'll talk to you later good evening shortly after eight o'clock is it I don't even know Alexa what time is it yeah 8 12 shortly after eight o'clock I'm actually heading to bed because I'm tired I feel like it. I feel like going to bed. So I'm going to go to bed. Rush just got home. I just heard the door slam. So I'm sure he's coming upstairs as I speak. Yep, here he comes. So just getting ready for bed. Turn on another work day. And that's it. So have a good night. Doodles.